Okay, here we go. This is it. This is the tough stuff. This is real data structures now. This is the Widowmaker. This separates the men from the boys. Maybe I should get started with the video instead. So how do I create a linked list using Kotlin? Well, first you start off by creating a class and call it node. And here I call it linked list because it's a mistake. I'm going to be correcting the mistake in a future video because the list after all is a node which has a value and a pointer to the next node. And that's all it is. Same with the tree. Practically speaking, you don't really manage a linked list by having one node and trying to access its next pointer and then its next pointer. It's just not practical when you're dealing with a large list. You create a linked list instead as an independent class which manages nodes inside. This we'll see later, but let's start off with something simple like the core of this problem, which is the node class itself. It takes a generic type any, not optional, not nullable. It has a value of generic type. Now, first of all, we're going to override the two string function so that whenever we want to print this node, something meaningful and human readable would come out. So the logic here goes, if the next pointer of this node we're dealing with is not null, meaning there are still nodes to explore, print the value of this node that we're dealing with in an arrow, and then print the two string of its next node that's recursive. Otherwise, if this is the last node or it's a one node list, just print that value. And that's it. Now let's try something a little more difficult. I'm gonna try and print this list in reverse. First thing we're gonna do is call this function on the next node, okay, recursively. And then check if this next node is not null. If it isn't, print an arrow, stay with me here. Otherwise, print the value of this node. So what's going on here? The code that's gonna run after this first recursive call is only gonna actually run after this first call returns null for next. That question mark there says, run this function if next is not null. So it's gonna keep going until the end of the list where next is actually null. There is no more other nodes. There is nothing next. Then it'll call the ones below. So you're not gonna add an arrow here because next is null. So it's not gonna enter this function. What it will do is print the value of that node that you've reached. And then next won't be null. You'll print an arrow, etc., etc. It just unravels like that. So it's pretty clear after you understand that the question mark is what's creating this trigger for the base case to run the code below it. And that's it. That's it for the node class. Let's now create a quick runner class to make sure all of this runs fine. So we initialize a list. It's a node with a value one. And the next pointer is another node with a value two. And its next pointer is another node with a value three and so on. I was adding these named arguments just so you could get the idea of what's going on, but they are basically useless. So let's just remove them. Now you got your list. Let's try printing it. All right, we got one, two, three, four, five. Excellent. Let us now try to reverse. This is the moment of truth. Print in reverse, and there's your reversed linked list. Now you can get into Google. Good luck. 